What's up guys, welcome back to Among the Fence. I am your host Aaron, and we're gonna do something a little bit different today for my 100th video. I'm gonna go completely off script. I'm pretty much winging this entire thing. And I wanted it to just be more personal, like we're literally just chilling here and hanging out and talking instead of me talking at you and presenting my opinion on albums to you. I wanted to go over some albums I recently changed my mind on and I've gotten a couple questions and just random comments in my comments. And I wanted to address some of those things too. And I'm not going to be posting like screenshots of any of the people asking the comments or asking the questions in the comments. And it's, I don't understand why. It's actually the reason why I came up with the request board too, is I've gotten a lot of people saying they don't want to have a shout out. They don't want their name to be shown in my video for some reason, which is weird because YouTube is like not that personal at all. I feel like people would have a hard time finding out any information about me personally just from youtube so i don't know why they don't want shout outs I, I don't know maybe it's just yeah i i have no idea why and since i first started this channel i have gone back and i have listened to a few of the albums that i've rated in the past just i don't know just to revisit them just to see you know what it was in the album that i didn't like or what it was that drew me to it and I found myself feeling differently about certain albums. Some, and that's not to necessarily say I fell in love with albums that I hated. <clears throat> and it's not to say that I now hate albums that I used to love. And I'm not really going to go over an album where I'm like, yeah, I thought it was a 6. And I would have rated it like a 6.3. This is something that actually like I strongly disagree with what I said in the past. So the very first video... I ever did was The Devil Wears Prada, The Act. And I admit, I had no clue what it was that I was doing. I didn't do a practice uh, review on anything before it. I didn't really go over, like, I, I listened to the album so many times, but I didn't, like, write anything up, really. I just took a couple notes, and I developed just a personal opinion on the album and I just went in there and just started talking away with no structure no n nothing I had no clue what I was doing people tore me apart in the comments they let me know that I had no clue what I was doing they let me know that I was messing up left and right somebody called me out for only listening to the album one time which I don't I I listened to it like nine ten times I don't know I sat on this album for like a week but I gave this album a 2.7 out of 10 and the reason why I want to take it back or I want to adjust that rating is because there are some freaking banger songs on there sure it isn't like old school devil wears Prada they do have a little bit more of a pop thing going on and a more generic sounding metalcore that you would hear from like bring me the horizon and that's not necessarily a bad thing I do want uh, like I did want it to be heavier, but the overall sound isn't that bad. But there are some songs on there that are just absolute garbage. Like, for instance, Lines in Your Hands, Wave of the Youth, Thread, Switchblade, even though, like those songs are not that good, especially the Build Me Up just to Tear Me Down. The, those, those lyrics are just trash and the vocal delivery is just so cringy. I stand by what I say on that. I said that and I was very angry about it and I was very forceful and I stand by it. But I would rate this album now probably closer to like a 5, which isn't that great, but a 2.7 is that's that's not a good rating. A 5 is a lot better. And I do agree with a lot of the things that people said in the comments. Another one that I've changed my mind on is August Burns Red's Guardians, which some of you guys might find this a little confusing, mainly because that's one of my favorite bands. And they're like in my top five, probably. Any given day, they might be number one. But when Guardians first came out, it was kind of a rough time in my life. I uh, was very sick. I had a very bad cold which then turned into vertigo and I was extremely dizzy and I had anxiety. I couldn't leave my bed. Um, the world kept spinning. I felt sick all the time. I couldn't, I wasn't eating. I lost like 
12, 13 pounds or something like that in like a week period. I, I was not doing too good. And then that album came out and the lyrics in it and all that made me feel a lot better about life. And I was just super excited when my favorite bands came out. So it was just a, it was just a highlight in my life in that period of time when everything was pretty low. And I even mentioned a lot of this in my review. And I even said my review is going to be heavily biased just because I give them so much praise. And I, I'm, I'm part of the August Burns Red Jerk Circle. And we are all about it. But after listening to it a few more times, some of the songs on there I didn't give enough credit to. And some of the songs on there I gave a little bit too much credit to. I rated it a perfect 10 out of 10, which... I think I've only done that with four of my album reviews out of, I think, I think I have like 76 reviews or 96 reviews or something like that done so far. And one of the main songs on the album, which I t just kind of skimmed over, was The Narrative, which is the very first song on the album, which freaking it's so good. The more times I listen to it, I put that song on, just some, like I put the album on just to listen to that song sometimes. And the rest of the album is kind of overplayed for me, but I I wouldn't give it a 10 out of 10. I would probably give it closer to like a, I'd say like maybe 8.2, 8.3 or something like that. It is not nearly as perfect. There's a lot more moments in it that I don't really like all that much. Sure, they're neat and they're cool and it's the first time August Burns Red has had like clean vocals in a long time and they have different chants and stuff, but I'm not really into the whole chanty thing that they do on some of the songs the clean vocals are all right but it's just there's more variety in this album but a lot less of things that i personally enjoy like a lot more heaviness really cool fast zippy riffs that just rip your face off like you get in constellations or even in rescue and restore <laughs> messengers i mean just so many different albums and going from Phantom Anthem, which is super melodical and extremely technical into this album, seems like it was a mesh of their more thrashy selves and the super technicalness. And I liked it, but I, uh, I'm drawn more towards either one instead of a happy medium. Another one is my most popular review and not in a good way is my Amir Hindsight review which has 923 views, 29 likes, and a whopping 45 dislikes and 111 comments. It's my most popular video all around. I think the only one that comes close to it is my Devil Wears Prada video that I did, which is like a 600 or something like that. And I think the Slow Decay by the Acacia Strain is like close to 500 maybe. I don't know. But this one is huge. And I don't disagree with the rating I gave it, a 2 out of 10. But I did say some things in there about Frankie Palmieri, about him being racist and sexist and homophobic and all that stuff. And I didn't do current research on him. And come to find out, he has apologized and he's kind of straightened his life out a little bit and done some things to make up for the things he's done and said and just the stupid stuff, <laughs> the stupid promotions he's done. And he's just, he was just an awful person. And I don't think he's not awful anymore, but he has improved quite a bit. And a lot of people mistook, mistaken, mistook that video for me just beating him up and saying, because he sucks, this album's a two out of 10. But I just, I was basically giving that information out as a background on the band and who they are and what they stand for. That way, when I start talking about the lyrics and stuff and about how they're super tough and they're calling out different bands and stuff, it isn't, this is why they're doing, this is who they are. This is what they do. Musically, performance, vocally, all that <clears throat> is what I based this album off of. I try to not put my ratings and my views into an album based off of who the artists are because honestly if it was the case i wouldn't even listen to these guys there's a lot of bands where i don't like the artists but i love their music and that's just i, I don't know i'm 
I, I feel like I'm pretty fair when it comes to that, but I think just stating my very strong opinion about him made people think the only reason why I did that, the only reason why I gave it such a low re- rating is because I don't like him. Which, I mean, if he made a kick-ass album, I can sit here and tell you how much I hate him till I'm blue in the face, but if his album's good, I'm going to tell you it's good. And in this case, it wasn't. And I know that was really short, but those are basically the only albums where my opinion has changed on it and have stayed a consistent difference. I mean, there's some albums where I'm like, you know what, this album isn't really all that great. And then I listen to it a week later, I'm like, actually, no, I was right, it kicks ass still. Or, I'm like, this album wasn't that bad. And I'm like, no, actually, it still kicks ass. So, those are the only ones where I felt a need to address something or to... <laughs> explain myself so now i was going to start answering questions about me personally some personal questions about me that are personal that people ask all the time in comments or just on instagram even because i'm getting more followers from instagram and a lot of people ask me if i'm married obviously i have a ring on my finger yes i'm married i've been married for uh four and a half years to my wife nicole uh we post pictures on instagram all the time you can find us there um aaron slash sunny s-o-n-y-i instagram a lot of people ask me about my amp it is elaney uh ironheart uh 60 watt and uh i've actually only had it for a little while and this cab right here is a harley benton i know super cheap but i wanted to spend a little bit more money on the amp and just have a good sound i want and then i could do whatever i want with the cabinet later um i am heavily into reading these are all me and my wife's books <clears throat> i've read about 90 percent of them i love manga uh parasite is one of the best manga in the whole world and it is also one of the best anime in the whole world if you haven't watched it go watch it on hulu or maybe netflix pretty sure it's on hulu um i'm also a avid music collector mostly in cds <laughs> because i don't i've never owned a record but i recently started uh getting into records and i re- got silent planets that one's new i also got death therapy and this is all within like the past couple weeks and then comrades i actually discovered these guys on instagram and clicked on it and their music is beautiful if you love uplifting music with uh kind of post-hardcore female vocals and distorted male vocals. Freaking amazing. And for people who don't know, um, Among the Fence, the name of my YouTube channel, is from Coheed and Cambria. It's part of the, their music, and it's part of the the Amory Wars, which is their uh, graphic novel. Among the Fence, the Fence is like the universe that they're in and all that. And so when I saw... And keeping secrets of silent earth i might do a review on this sometime in the future i don't know when or how there's a lot of music out there i want to review uh i just don't have time to do it especially because of work there's so many people are requesting things and there's so much new music coming out it's so hard for me to keep up i mean i, I put a lot of effort into this you guys don't i mean i really hope it shows that i put effort into this but i really put probably more effort than what it shows into this i take so much time out of my day to do this. It's currently 10 o'clock right now. I should be going to bed so I could go to work tomorrow. But I'm doing this. And that's alright. But yes. Coheed and Cambria. When I saw this I had to buy it. And it sucked. Because I bought this. And then when I got it. This whole side right here was completely. It was, it, was, it was folded over. Even in the box. The box was damaged. And I sent the company an email. And I was like dude. It, it's, it, it's jacked up. <laughs> I know you guys don't have to replace it. But if you could, I would appreciate that more than you could ever imagine. And they replaced it. Uh, Merchbar.com. Freaking awesome. And then, of course, Rivers and Nil. This is another album where I rated it like a 7.7 or 8.7, I think. Um, Now it's like a 10. I freaking love this album. I listen to it almost every single day. It's so good. I cannot get enough of this thing. I'm a sucker for the sax solos and uh the story yeah i'm a hardcore sucker for it <clears throat> uh i also play obviously since i have an amp i have guitars um which a lot of people ask me about and i own three ibanez a fender and a squire that one of my friends gave me 
and I'll, I'll show it to you. Hold on. So I started playing guitar when I was about 13. I had a Yamaha, like a black Yamaha that my mom bought me. And I played on that till I was about 17. I had that in like a little uh, Spider 3, which, oh God, I loved that amp. I, I had so much fun with that thing. And then I wanted an Ibanez. I loved, loved Steve Vai. I loved Joe Satriani. So my mom went out <clears throat> to get me an Ibanez. She had no clue what she was getting me. And she ended up getting me this guy, which is a Ibanez EX4 or RG4 EX1. And this removed, tremolo is all blocked off because I like get to be stable. And I also have um, Evolution pickups in it, which are Steve Vai's pickups. And I've had a lot of work done to this guitar. All the wiring has been redone. It's got new pots, all that stuff. Uh, this is my baby. My mom got me this when I was 17. This is, yeah, probably my most played guitar. And I had that guitar until I was about 13. That was my only guitar. And I joined a band and they played in drop C. <laughs> and it was switched between drop C to um, D standard. And on that guitar, which I didn't have the f the bridge blocked off yet, was a freaking nightmare to change it on because it throws the bridge off, strings all floppy. So I ended up going out and buying a guitar that was a hardtail. And I love Ibanez, so I got this guitar. Which, if you guys are on YouTube and following Jared Dines, this is the same exact guitar that he has. It's a, a SZ520. The only difference is I have stock pickups in it. I do have EMGs, 5155 or 8185s that I do want to put in it. I just, I don't know, it just works. And I'm being lazy. And there are two guitars that I own that I don't have with me right now. Two of them are at a church that I play at. One of them is a 1974 Fender Stratocaster that my best friend gave me probably about 10 years ago, give or take, 2010, 2011. Uh, he climbed up in his attic when he was moving, found a guitar case, pulled it down. It was his dad's. He knew I played guitar, asked his dad if he could give it to me, and his dad said, yeah. And I replaced the pickups in it, and I, I wish I had it show you because it's a super cool guitar. But yeah, I play that one at church. It usually just stays there because it's a pretty secure area. And then after that, I was on Instagram, and Tony Cap Capocci, something like that, is Jared Dine's YouTube manager. And he was in Rest or Pose. And he was going from playing guitar, bass. And I think he was going to start doing vocals for Rest or Pose. And he was selling off all of his guitars. And I saw an Ibanez RGA121. Which is a freaking sexy, sexy guitar. I was like, I, I, I have to own that. And he sold it to me for a freaking killer price. It, it's a little bit dinged up on the body. Some marks right here. You can see some little things right there, right here, right there. Yeah, the body's been through some stuff. Uh, this pickup, as far as I can tell, is completely useless. And that's why I bought this one. And I actually have another pickup that I'm going to replace the bridge one. I believe this is Evolution. I'm going to do a whole wiring thing because... This guitar was used live, so it's seen some stuff, but it's cool because by buying that, I ended up making kind of a connection with Tony for a little bit. I saw Rest or Pose. I got to hang out with him. Uh, I'll post some pictures here and there. I got to also meet <clears throat> Jared Dines, who <laughs> it was like the fourth to last show on the tour, and he was dead dead tired completely he was so out of it super nice guy but extremely tired fluff uh, from Merce and beards ryan bruce was not even there because i'm sure he was completely done with meeting people I'm, I'm i'm sure it had nothing to do with the fans i know he loves the fans but as far as being tired and meets and greets he was probably just wanted to be alone for a little while um <clears throat> austin dickey was running the merch booth and hanging out one of the sweetest nicest guys i've ever met in my life and one thing that i didn't know about him which caught me off guard is he's a freaking giant 
he is a huge, huge person. I am 6'4", so there's not a lot of people that are taller or as tall as I'm taller than a majority of the people that I come into contact with every day. And I'm pretty sure he was six, five or like six. He's just gigantic. He's like six, six, huge dude, but still one of the sweetest, kindest people I've ever met. I actually found myself wanting to hang out with him more than the other guys, which I found, which was kind of interesting. But yeah, buying that guitar and getting me the guys was a really cool experience. Another random question I get uh, is why do I wear a beanie? And I actually started a YouTube video back in like, or I started a YouTube channel back in like 2017. It's called Aaron Sunny, S-O-N-Y-I. It's actually my mom's maiden name. It's Hungarian. And I started that channel and it was a funny commentary video or channel. I don't know why I keep saying video. Funny commentary channel where I made fun of other things on the internet. And it was doing pretty decent, but it was just stressing me out because I needed content. And it was so time consuming to find something that was funny that you guys would think were, was funny. And then I had to make jokes for it. And then sometimes it wasn't funny. So I'd just be like, F it. And I just forget the whole, it was causing me so much stress. And I wanted to do something that I was passionate about. Now there's plenty of content out there. And that's why I came up with this. But while I was making those videos in my thumbnails, I noticed that I had a hell of a time cutting around hair. I, I, I There's always light shining through it. It just looked tacky. You couldn't get it right. There's just different thing. I, it, hair was a pain in the ass trying to cut out my figure, my figure, and then putting it in front of a picture, or in this case, putting it in front of an album cover and my blue screen that I use. It was a pain in the butt, and it just didn't look good. So I was like, you know what? I'll I'll wear a beanie because it's smooth. Just edit right over it. That's literally the only reason why I wear a beanie is for my thumbnail pictures. Just so that way it makes my life so much easier and it looks so much better in the freaking thumbnail, man. When I look at like Nick Nocturnal's videos and his thumbnails and his hair, it, look at his hair next time. It looks freaking weird. And Jared Dines wears a hat. That, that looks good. And thank God he does that because that looks really good. All right, guys, that's about all I had planned, even though I didn't really plan any of this stuff. Um, if you enjoyed this style of content, let me know. Uh, maybe I could do this regularly, maybe like every 50 videos or every 100 videos. I could do like a life update kind of thing. Um, maybe I could let you know about what records I've bought recently. I don't know. Ask me questions. I'll answer more questions in like a video. I tried to present a Q&A style video before. I told you guys to leave me questions. I didn't really get any. I even went to a couple of the music pages I'm in. I told them like, hey, you know, like I post my videos. If you guys have any questions for me, even non-musically related, let me know. I didn't get any questions, so I figured I would just start addressing things that people see in my video and, I don't know, like my guitars and stuff. But yeah, if you guys are interested in more videos like this, more me just chilling here talking to you, then yeah, let me know. And if you're not interested in it, then I'm sorry I put you through this. And as always, if you guys have anything you want me to review, new, old, EP, single, full-length album, whatever, leave a comment below letting me know what it is. We'll throw it on the whiteboard and we'll get you squared away. And I probably should have taken Touche Amore off of there and one of the other ones because I probably will have reviewed those by the time you see this video because this is actually my 99th video. This won't, won't be released until it's my 100th video. You guys just don't know that. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up if you're too shy to leave a comment letting me know like, hey, yeah, I did enjoy this kind of content that you put out. You know, you can do it again in the future and I won't hate it. And if you didn't enjoy it, give it a thumbs down. That way I know... Next time I do it, I can give you a heads up. That way you don't have to watch it next time. <laughs> and if you want to see more of my videos, feel free to subscribe. Click the bell icon. You know, I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. You guys can do whatever you want. If you want to see more of my stuff, though, I mean, you know how to do it. You know how to subscribe and click the bell icon. I'll tell you in all my other videos, if you want to do it, do it. And I hope you guys all have a good rest of your day or night whenever you happen to be watching this. And I know that... We are all on the edge of our seats with what's going on in the election right now, especially with how close it is, whether you voted one way or the other. It's so close and it's causing a lot of stress for people and a lot of anxiety. And it's just just relax. 
Still continue to enjoy your life. Don't let it consume you. Politics aren't everything. And also win or lose, you know, we're all in this together. So if your guy wins, just be kind to the other people, you know. I mean, I'm sure whoever wins or loses, there's going to be nasty people on either side. But like I said, we're all in this together. This is still all of our country. We, we, we just got to love each other and take care of each other. And I hope you guys, again, have a good rest of your day. And I will talk to you guys next time. Hopefully, I'll have a bring, you, bring the horizon video for you guys ready uh, soon when I have time. See you guys. I was trying to make a rain, keep me lying on my